Ooh, what's up, everybody? My name is OMG WTF LOL to WBRB, and welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016, not 2020. We are back with the Invasion Series Season 2, the brand era, and we will be booking Monday Night Raw here tonight. Technically, I guess you can call this the post show after Starcade. But there is no shenanigans from Starcade to be discussed tonight. It's not Nitro. So y'all gotta wait for Nitro to see the, the post-show shenanigans from Starcade. Until then, we will just have to settle for Monday Night Raw. I hope you all can forgive me. Before we get started with the show, there is one pretty important thing I gotta share with you guys here today. Um, and this was just something I found out today as I was about to book. Or not book, but record. So, as I was uh, sitting down to record, well, let's actually rewind a bit and start a little bit of ahead of time. So, my microphone that I use is kind of broken in a way. Um, how do I put it? The cord... I don't know how to put it, pretty much, but the cord that goes into the little socket that you, you know, you attach... Not to my computer, but to the microphone. Well, the little metal casing thing around, I don't know, little freaking microchip thing. I have no idea what the hell to call it. I'm not very technological sound. So, me explaining to this, to this, you, blah, 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 I can't speak. Me explaining this to you guys is just going to sound really stupid. But it's like a little, I don't know, microchip kind of thing. It's, I guess it's what houses all the little wires and whatnot that, uh, make the thing work pretty much okay and um the little metal casing around it that's supposed to protect all that is stuck in the little slot that it goes in so like it's stuck in there and um the little microchip thing i can pull out like i can pull that thing out and for a while it's been fine as long as i don't mess with it or move it around um, unfortunately though, not a lot of people know that, and, um, someone else moved it around, and it, it appeared like it might be broken. It wasn't detecting on OBS, we're gonna break the fourth dimension here, it, oh, look at this, it appeared like it wasn't showing up on OBS, which is what I use to record all these videos, and, um, I was panicking for a minute, because the desktop audio is just horrendous whenever you use that. And uh, most of the time I don't catch it. Luckily I was able to catch it this time because mostly the microphone didn't light up when it does. Uh, and it started lighting up eventually, but it wasn't working. So then I got, I went online and I started trying to find a replacement cord. And I was trying to find the exact cord. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. But it is working still, so that's good to know. Um, or it's the desktop audio still in and, and the video screwed. So if the desktop audio kicks in at all, or if the audio is messed up at all, t long story short here, my microphone is kind of busted. I, I'm trying not to really move as much here because I don't want to affect it. I don't want to move the microphone. I don't want my leg to hit the little side table it's on. So I'm just kind of sitting here in a very still position and if the audio goes out in the video, um, let me know. And I will, unfortunately, delete that video and have to rebook all of Raw. But, oh, wait. We might have to settle with not rebooking Raw, unfortunately. Because if I go back, it'll take me back to Sunday. Which normally isn't a problem because Raw is on Monday. But we just did Starcade, and I'm not rebooking Starcade 2. So, the audio goes out in this at all, I apologize, and um, I maybe I'll add some music over it if, you got, if I catch it or something. Just let me know. Again, I'm going to probably have to start looking for a new microphone. This might go out on me at any moment. Who knows, maybe, maybe it was just a, a, fig, a little fiddling around with it as I did to get it to work, and... Maybe we won't have the problem again, but I, I should probably start looking in for a new microphone along with the new desktop. But you guys know 
you guys know how it is. I, I say there's a lot of things I need to do, in which there's a lot of things I need to do, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I ever get to do them, so. Anyway, let's turn this sap show around. Let's get booked onto Monday Night Raw here. Again, no uh, fallout from Starcade, unfortunately, but um, Monday Night Raw is still fun. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this episode. I've kind of been uh, booking Total Extreme Wrestling on the side, like booking other companies and um, different saves and all that. Like I've done a little bit of the Cornell verse, I think it's called, like booking a pretty low company down in there. And I've really been kind of figuring out like more of the inside mechanics, which is funny because now there's a whole new game I'm going to have to figure out after I get a new computer if and when that ever happens. So, um... This is kind of a new way of booking here. I don't know if you guys will notice at all, but uh, I'm curious myself to see how it goes because I kind of paid a little bit more attention to certain people's staminas and uh, just lengthwise of certain things. And I kind of made sure I got every storyline on the show as well, which normally doesn't happen. Granted, I will admit the main storyline of, you know, the Vince McMahon Undertaker story is not on here, but that was done on purpose because I wanted to focus on another main storyline, and I didn't want to take away any focus because of that. So it was, it was a done on purpose. But nonetheless, let's go ahead, start off this show, as you guys have been staring at the screen here for a little bit. We got a 35E plus rating here, in an abysmal pre-show matchup. The Dojo, the team of Tajiri and Hayashi, going over C.W. Anderson and J.J. Johnson in 4 minutes, 49 seconds. Excuse me. When Tajiri defeated J.J. Johnson with the Brain Buster. Good lord, Tajiri. Poor guy. Uh, in terms of in-ring work, Hayashi was head and shoulders above everybody else. J.J. Johnson, of course, was the weak link. So, uh, C.W. Anderson, I believe, is an ECW alumni. Don't quote me on that. But he is in our developmental system. And uh, J.J. Johnson is just a local talent that I hired here tonight because, you know, you got C.W., so oh, J.J. I don't know. They fit together as a team. And the Dojo, of course, is a team that we are kind of building up in a way. They haven't made their official debut yet, but they're kind of like testing the waters on the uh, the pre-show and whatnot. And um, I, I should, I'm probably going to start. I think I tease some segments. Like, te you know, I had some segments teasing the debut of the Dojo. But I, I'm probably going to start really hyping it up. So the dojo is pretty much Steve Blackman's kind of opened up his own, you know, dojo. And uh, his two top students slash, you know, probably teachers, like the lower classes. Because I believe that's how, you know, dojos and like karate schools and whatnot work like. And um, it's kind of a comedy gimmick in a way. We got, you know, a heel face team here, which is a very interesting dynamic. I'm curious to see how that works out. But it's the, uh, you know, Hayashi's the more serious respect and you know think of kind of like the iron fist story in a way and in fact it's kind of a lot like iron fist now that i look at it but I, I i swear to you i wasn't inspired by it i was just trying to think of something to do with steve blackman and then i just so happened to have both tajiri and hayashi i believe in developmental so i was like hey wild hair up my ass idea but um it's kind of like uh tajiri's the jokester you know the more laid back goofy kind of guy whereas hayashi would be more um I don't freaking remember the name of the the villain or jealous guy from Iron Fist. It's like Doctor Strange kind of too. If you if you saw that movie or if you've read the comics at all with like how Doctor Strange is the chosen one in a way and Baron Mordo, I believe his name is, is was always kind of he thought he was going to be the chosen one and now he's jealous that he wasn't. So yeah, that that's kind of the direction where we're going with the dojo. I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm going to also try to plug my laptop charger in. Please don't touch the cord to the microphone. Hopefully I didn't mess with anything up. So let's actually try to get started in the show here. Uh, 35E plus rating here. We've already talked about all that, I believe. The hot crowd was against J.J. Johnson, chanting for him to not come back. Well, don't worry. He's not under contract. He was just a local talent, so good. J.J. Johnson seemed off his game, which is unfortunate for him, but having a crowd chant against you will do that to you. Uh, Johnson had a 7 in ring performance. C.W. Anderson with a 30. Hayashi with a 50. And Tajiri with a 31. 
So Anderson not too far from Tajiri, but then again, Tajiri is not the most popular superstar. Wow, this match did a lot better than I thought, and I don't know what Shannon Moore's popularity is. In fact, um, I'm going to go ahead and make note of this here. Uh, Shannon Moore in ring performance. And what is that? I think it was like a 50-something. Good Lord, he was on par with Val Venus. I don't know what his popularity is, but I've got to check after that. Shannon Moore might be freaking amazing in this game, if that's the case. Uh, 57 C- minus rating here in a pre-show bout that had subpar wrestling and little heat to it. Shannon Moore makes his, I guess, technical in-ring debut here on Monday Night Raw against Val Venus in 10 minutes, 14 seconds by pinfall with the Morgasm. All right. And I, I guess it's not an in-ring debut because this is the pre-show. But um, Tracy Brooklyn, of course, is the manager of Val Venus and Godfather. So she did good work ringside. But still, both Shannon Moore and Val Venus with a 52 in-ring performance. Now, I know Val is around the 52s, I believe. I don't know where Shannon is. He might be there, too. But uh, if you remember correctly, Shannon debuted on the last episode of Monday Night Raw kind of as the number one fan of RVD and um, assisting in helping Matt Hardy kind of catching RVD and Sabu off guard and helping Matt Hardy win the Hardcore Championship. So this was just kind of a way to test where his in-ring skill is. And if he's getting a 57C- in his first match against Val Venus, that's promising. All right, I'm going to take a quick drink of water here. I wish I would have got more water. That's got, not going to be enough, so. Yeah, what do I got, like one more drink after this? Thank God Vince McMahon's not on this show. 92, solid A to start off the show here. Monday Night Raw opens up with a recap from last week. Of course, showcasing Hulk Hogan and Bradshaw getting Triple H in the middle of the ring by themselves because earlier in the night, Hogan took out Nash and Shawn Michaels as well. And uh, Stephanie McMahon was distracted by her father by the time. Uh, her father had to talk to her about something. Kind of good timing in a way. I don't know if that's just TV magic or if Hogan had something to do with it. But uh, nonetheless, just kind of getting a recap of what happened from last week where uh, Hogan and Bradshaw took turns whipping Triple H with the bull rope slash Hulk Hogan's belt, weight belt thing he wears around his waist. And the show officially opens in black and white as the click, specifically Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash, make their way toward the ring and take to the mic when they are in the ring. Nash starts us off. <clears throat> Hulk Hogan, you've made your point, all right? Last week, not only did you jump Shawn and I from behind with what? I don't know. It sure as hell hurt, I'll give you that. But then you luck out, take advantage of the one moment Stephanie's not with Triple H, and you and your, oh, excuse me, and you hobble your old ass down to the ring and proceed to whip my old good friend in the middle of that ring with your cowboy boyfriend. Well, don't hold your breath on getting your hands on Hunter again, because Stephanie's not leaving his side. So, Hunter, I hope you're watching. Because we're, we're doing this for you, brother. Hogan, Hunter may not be here tonight, but Sean and I, we are. So, uh, why don't you go find your YMCA buddy and uh, you meet the heartbreak kid and Big Daddy Cool. Hold up, gotta open up the handy dandy notepad. But you meet the heartbreak kid and Big Daddy Cool in the main event tonight. That's when Hulk Hogan's music shortly pays afterward when uh, Nash's challenge has been issued. And out comes the Hulkster. And Vince McMahon may not be on this episode, but Hulk Hogan is. So I really wish I would have brought more water. <clears throat> you really expect me to believe that Triple H isn't here tonight? Either Triple H has never... <clears throat> that was turning into a Triple H. Either Triple H has never had his ass whipped as a child... Or you think I'm an idiot? I'm trying not to do a, a, a hardcore Hulk Hogan because I don't have the water, so forgive me for my Hogan doing an impersonation of Triple H voice there. You know, while I do think you're an idiot, it's not because Hunter isn't here. Because he's not. See, while 
He may not be injured. He's definitely bruised up. So no, you're not an idiot because of that. You're an idiot because of years. Me and the bad guy fooled you into destroying a company with us. And we did it easily because what your Hulkamaniacs don't know is you're an egomaniac. You know what, brother? I don't care if Triple H is sitting in the bed at home. My beef has always been with you and Hall anyway. I've already taken out the bad guy. Should it be hard to take you out. It's funny you mention me hobbling down here, brother. Especially after you hobbled your ass down the ramp. You'll need a walking stick long before I do, Jack. Ugh. And of course, that kind of, uh, that was a sore spot for Kevin Nash. So he kind of steps up and Shawn Michaels got to kind of step in front of him before he falls for Hulk Hogan's trap. And he's easy there, big sexy. He's just trying to get under your skin. And besides, Hulk, you're not just facing Nash. This wasn't a one-on-one -on -one challenge. This was a tag team challenge. Okay? You're not the only one who puts... What? Oh, you're not the only one who put my best... I... Oh, okay. I know what I'm trying to say here. You guys will have to forgive me because not only am I recording this on the worry that my microphone will go out any moment and very low water with both growly voices the likes of Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels, I'm also pretty tired at the moment. My bedtime is coming up. As you see, it's 12.39. I work nights. My bedtime is the afternoons. Anyway, moving on. Da -da -do, da -da -do, da -da -do. Gotta do the Wayne's World skip. You're not the only one who put my best friend on the sheet least. That drunk Bradshaw, <coughs> golly, has to answer for this as well. So you can get that cowboy to agree, then this match, or if you can't get that cowboy to agree, then this match is off. Oh boy. I really wish, okay, we're gonna, we're just gonna drink the rest of this water now because there's really not a lot of Hulk Hogan stuff and, and Shawn Michaels stuff and whatnot after this, so. Let's just make it through this one promo. Let's do it. Oh, don't you worry about Bradshaw, brother. I could guarantee you that Bradshaw's down for a brawl for, for brawl for all, anytime, anywhere. What you two should worry about is that ring rust you've been gathering. Especially you, Sean. Because you may have found your smile, but you sure as hell lost your skill. Now Sean Michaels freaks out, of course. Him taking exception to what Hulk Hogan says there. Nash has to hold him back, and then Hulk Hogan does the classic, So what you gonna do, Click? When Hulk Hogan and Bradshaw run wild on you. <coughs> <coughs> okay, I totally didn't fake those last couple ones. All right. Whew. I'm glad you guys came to the show today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have, do me a favor, leave me a comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's just, okay, let's move on. 92 solid A rating for that. Shawn Michaels was superb without, with, blah, 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 working without a, ah, okay, you know what? I'm sorry I have to do this to you guys, and I really hope it doesn't mess with the microphone. I might have to get some water. I'm contemplating it. That Hogan promo kicked my ass at the end. I shouldn't have done that thing. No, let's make it, let's do it. I don't want to mess up the mic, so I'm not going to, I'm not, we're, we're just going to have to roll with it. This is the most interesting episode you guys will ever watch. I promise you that. Shawn Michaels was superb without working, working without a script. I had the crowd in his hand the entire time, which is hilarious because I do not. Angle got the show off to a strong start. Crowd was hot. Nash was good. Gained heat for the storyline. All in all, good stuff. You'd love to see it. All right. Ooh. Back from commercial break here. I'd assume there's a nice commercial break. In between that, we uh, have the entrance of Gregory Helms and Molly Holly because we have mixed tag team action up next. And during the entrance of Helms and Molly Holly, we got one of those little like uh, pre-match promos that, you know, kind of show up while they're coming out. You know, that was... 
inner, you know, you, you get what I'm saying, right? I don't have to explain this. So Helm starts, Since my triumphant return, Molly and I have become the proverbial party poopers to the pimp party. It's bad enough Miss Brooklyn is hiding balloons under his sh her shirt. But it's times like now when I see two old men still trying to act sexy, making me wish you two were still with the right to censor. But you know, after tonight, Molly and I put an end to the pimp party. Or to your pimp party. That's what I was trying to say there. So that gained heat for the storyline here between uh, Molly and Tracy Brooklyn. We now head to the mixed tag team max maction. Okay. 54 C- minus rating here in a terrible match. The Godfather and Tracy Brooklyn defeat the team of Gregory Helms and Molly Holly in 9 minutes 45 seconds when the Godfather defeated Gregory Helms by pinfall. Uh, Tracy, unfortunately, was the weak link struggling to keep up with everyone else's in-ring performances, but I'm honestly not too surprised by that. So Molly had an in-ring performance of a 52, outperforming everybody in this match, I may add. Golly, Molly. She's uh, she's making a, a, she's trying to make her, her mark and say, hey, look, I want the women's championship. Anyway. Helms with an in-ring performance of a 51. The Godfather with a 50. And Tracy Brooklyn with a 36. This gained heat for the storyline, and uh, we're about to lose it. Moving on to the next segment. Oh, wow, no. Wow, 57C-. minus. You love to see it. With a 57C- minus rating here, as the Godfather and Tracy Brooklyn celebrate in the ring, Gregory Helms slides back in the ring and takes a metal bar. Um, I'm not sure what it's called. I, I, I think it's called a rhubar, but I looked that up, and that seems like that's actually like an actual plant but uh the bar that i'm thinking of is kind of like the bar they use to tighten the the ropes the turnbuckles i set up rings whenever i have to wrestle so that i know that thing i don't know what it's called but it's a metal bar so he hits him with the the bar that you use to pretty much tighten the ropes that's kind of where i got the idea from that back to the segment hits him with the metal bar to the back of the leg of the godfather Godfather goes down, and as he goes down, Gregory Helms takes the mount, begins to rain down punches onto the Godfather. Meanwhile, Molly intercepts Tracy Brooklyn, takes her town to the ground, and now holding her by her hair, pretty much pulling her by her hair, she forces Tracy to watch as Gregory Helms puts the beat down on the Godfather, all while blaming her for what's happening, pretty much saying, this is your fault, Tracy, this is all happening because of you. And uh, Val Venus then finally comes to uh, the aid of Godfather and Tracy Brooklyn running down to the ring. He has a chair of his own. He's definitely coming down with some reinforcements since, uh, you know, Gregory's got that uh, metal bar in there. And uh, he chases off Gregory Holmes and Molly Holly, and he checks on uh, Godfather as a, or both he and Tracy, I should say, check on the Godfather while they call for help because it looks like Godfather might be hurt. Moving on, we have a 78 solid B rating here as backstage Bradshaw finds Hulk Hogan, who is also in return looking for him. Hulk! Just the man I was looking for. I'm assuming you've heard the news, brother. You're damn right I heard the news. And there's nothing more that I want to do than kick the click's ass. I never had any doubt. Let's go talk in private. So, uh, just a quick little segment here, just kind of showcasing that Bradshaw, Hulk Hogan, they are on the same page, and indeed, they are going to be teaming tonight. You saw the thumbnail, very poorly made. I, I can only find a, the stupid WWE 2K14, or whatever the hell it was, renders for a good Shawn Michaels and Kevin Ash around this era, so forgive me. But anyway, Bradshaw, surprisingly, was superb working without a script here. He had the crowd in the palm of his... In Bradshaw, he's making a moment here. He's taking every, he's taking advantage of every moment in this this feud right now. All right, we move on to our next segment, which gets a 75 B minus rating here. Now, originally, I wanted this to um to be Ron or Rodney Mac versus Bubba Ray Dudley, but Bubba wasn't having any of this, so I, I had to change to Ron Simmons for obvious reasons here. But anyway, in a decent match here. Ron Simmons defeats Bubba Ray Dudley in 13 minutes, 6 seconds by pinfall with the Dominator. 
following a botched interference by Devon Dudley. So Devon uh, trying to help his brother here, you know, I would assume since, you know, Jacqueline's down there, Jazz is probably down there, Rodney Mack is definitely down there, that uh, Devon probably trying to come to the aid of his brother, but unfortunately ends up costing his brother in the long run, hits him instead of Ron Simmons, and Simmons, oh God, I touched the mic. I think we're good. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. And uh, Simmons is, uh, let's just check. Simmons gets the victory with the Dominator following the botched interference from Devon Dudley, and we are still good. 13 minutes and 6 seconds later. Uh, out of curiosity, I do want to check out the dirt sheet. See what the negatives are. So stamina was an issue. Interesting. See, the problem here is the Cornell versus stamina. Definitely, um, it, it tells you their stamina a lot better than this. This one hides some people's stamina, so I kind of have to go off an assumption. So the, these guys really couldn't go about 13 minutes, so they're maybe 10 minutes. Uh, anyway, Bubba and Devon on an awkward pairing. So they make excellent tag team partners, but when managed, they don't work well with each other, apparently. I mean, obviously, Devon costs them the damn match. Jackie and uh, Ron Simmons, of course, are a great pairing. Devon, teasing that heel turn. I mean, he did cost Bubba the match. Was it on purpose? Bubba with an in-ring performance of a 71. Ron Simmons with a 70. The split of the Dudley Boys storyline got a... Or gained heat. Yes. <laughs> I agree, Bubba. I agree. So, moving on, I guess Jacqueline and Jazz don't have to make their way towards the ring. Maybe after a commercial break, they're already in the ring because they were just out there. So, anyway, Jackie and Jazz are in the ring. A uh, video maybe before... I'm going to rewrite this whole segment, at least the beginning of this. So, before we go back to Raw, we get, like, the Raw recap, which showcases Jazz versus Triple H. And Jazz pinning... Or Triple H. <laughs> Jazz versus Trish Stratus and her pinning the WWE Women's Champion... That all happening last last week. And then once we're back from the commercial break, Jackie and Jazz are already in the ring. Jackie takes to the mic and she says, You see that little Miss Trish? Last week is a perfect picture of your future. Your reign as the WWE Women's Champion is coming to an end. Because last week when Jazz beat you, it only cemented my victory come SummerSlam. If my protege can beat you, then there is no question that I will squash you. I don't know. That was a horrible ja Jacqueline, by the way. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let's rewind that real quick, okay? You know, with all this talk about you getting a championship, championship opportunity... Oh, okay, hold on. Literally, let's rewind this. Let's try that jazz promo again. I shouldn't have recorded this being tired. Hold up. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's rewind that real quick, okay? You know, what's all this talk about you getting championship opportunities around here? Um, I am the number one contender, am I not? I don't give a damn about who you beat to supposedly earn your shot, Jackie. I beat the women's champion. If anyone should step up to come SummerSlam, it's me. And uh, Jacqueline now lowers her mic because, uh, you know, she doesn't really want the crowd to hear what her and Jazz are saying to each other. But the two are definitely having words. And, in fact, an argument starts to break out between, uh, I guess, mentor and protege here. Jazz, she kind of has a valid argument. I mean, yeah, Jacqueline, in, in my opinion, I agree with Jacqueline. She is the number one contender already. So Jazz will just have to wait till afterwards. But she did beat Trish Stratus. She pinned the women's champion. So... She arguably should, could, you know, could be or should be next in line. Anyway, the two start arguing until finally they are interrupted by the arrival of Lita and Lou Fisto. Lita and Lou Fisto's music plays, and out comes the duo. <clears throat> Ladies, you know, I hate to interrupt you two, and I'd really ha hate to have to agree with Jackie there, but she's right. Like, you know, look. I get that you're new around here, but Jacqueline is already the number one contender. So you'll have to wait for Trish to inevitably beat your so-called mentor. You know, but until then, our schedule's free, and you two don't seem to have anything to do tonight. 
You know, while I hate to be a bitch, but I can't stand your entitled ass. And there's nothing I want to do more than beat your ass. Oh, you're going to beat my ass? You and Cindy Lauper here? Look, if you girls want to have fun, then Jackie and I have no problem showing you the backside of our hands. And then Jazz throws the mic down. She motions for for Lita and Lou Fisto to come on. Let's fight. Let's do this. And Jacqueline's kind of looking at her like, is she serious right now? I know she did not just get me involved in a match. But uh, either way, that match is happening, and it's happening next. Gained heat for the Trish and Jackie storyline. You love to see it. And by the way, 63 solid C for Jackie, Jazz, and Lita all talking. And Lou Fisto rated on sex appeal. Maybe she's just that damn sexy. But I think that's some promise, especially with Jazz talking. Jacqueline is developing better performance skills as well. So we move on to said tag team match here. It's a 53C- minus rating here. And about that had subpar wrestling to it and little heat. Lita and Lou Fisto pick up the victory over Jacqueline and Jazz in 10 minutes, 29 seconds after Lita defeats Jazz by pinfall using underhanded tactics. So Lita cheating to beat Jazz here tonight. Take note of that. In terms of in-ring work, of course, Lita was head and shoulders above everybody else. In fact, Lita's better than some of the men. Uh, in fact, Lita using subtle manners to hint at the future heel turn. Hmm. Keep note of that. Lou Fisto had an in-ring performance of a 43. She's definitely getting up there. Worse than the match, though, unfortunately. Lita with a 62, as we already noted. She is the best of the match. Jazz with a 50. She's getting up there, almost on par with Jacqueline, who had a 52. This did lose heat for the Jazz and Lita storyline, though, but I'm sure we can gain it back later. Uh, Jacqueline is improving in her performance, and so is Jazz. So Jazz is definitely looking promising. By the way, did you guys hear Jazz uh, retired? She retired from uh, in-ring competition. I always wonder what happened with that NWA thing. Like, she was supposed to defend a title against Sienna at, like, the big NWA event or whatnot. I think it was the Crockett Cup. And um, something happened, and they ended up vacating the championship, which she held for, like, ever. And then um, they went with, like, Sienna versus... Uh, crap, I can't remember the girl's name. Santana Garrett. And, uh, yeah, Sienna won. Anyway, moving on. Just was curious what happened. I wonder if Jazz was like, I ain't putting Sienna over and then drop the title because of that. That's what I always thought happened, but... And then her retiring makes me kind of, uh, maybe thinking a little more. Let's move on from this segment, though, where we've stayed our, overstayed our welcome. So we got a 78 solid B rating as backstage Bubba walks ahead of Devon while Devon kind of walks behind trying to catch up. Bubba! But come on, man! Bubba, wait up. You know I didn't do that on purpose. Do I? Well, I sure hope you did. Do. Look, Devon, I trust you. You're my brother. But you know how this looks, right? For weeks, Simmons has been trying to recruit you. And then the one week I step in the ring with this guy, just so happens to be the one time you decide to get involved in my match. You know I was just looking out for you. You know what? I'm sure. I'm sure you were. But for the first time in our careers, now you decide to interfere on my behalf. Look, do me a favor in the future. Unless we're teaming, keep your nose out of my business. And Bubba walks off, still kind of frustrated. Devon, a little uh, taken aback by that and a little pissed off it would appear. He goes, your business. All right, then. Whatever. I don't know. Things aren't looking too good for the Dudley boys. I should have split them as a team that way. Not as like legitimately, but in the storyline. That way that would progress the storyline there. 54 C- minus rating here as backstage, or I guess during the commercial break segment airs, showing Lita and Lou making their way through the hallway. And uh, Lita, or excuse me, Lou Fisto steps up and says, uh, Hey, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. What's up, Lou? You know, I respect the hell out of you. Uh-huh. Which is why I can't help but wonder, why did you cheat out there? <laughs> oh, Lou. Look, I wouldn't really call that cheating. I'd, I'd call it more of giving Jazz and Jackie a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, but... 
Lou, look, don't overthink it, okay? It's not like I'm going to make a habit out of it. Come on, let's go party, all right? Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So, uh, Lou Fisto definitely picked up on, uh, Lita cheating there, but Lita promises she won't make a habit out of it. We'll see. 78 solid B rating here as the hardcore champion Matt Hardy stands in the ring alongside the fan from last week. And, uh, Matt takes the mic. <clears throat> you know, it wasn't too long ago when I cut the dead weight and took my brother out to the trash. And now look at me. You're hardcore champion and you know sure i'll admit it's not the prettiest title but we've all got to start somewhere right plus it is the only title that lets me legally beat my opponents with any and everything i can find and not face any consequences which leads me to the man standing by my side here tonight rob van dan's number one fan and my Best friend, Shannon Moore, everybody. Shannon uh, takes the wave. He's officially introduced to the roster. He's not just a one and done. He is on the main roster now. Yes. You know, Shannon is a true friend. Because if it wasn't for Shannon, I wouldn't be standing here today as your new hardcore champion. So, I think Shannon has earned a round of applause. Let's give it up for Shannon, everybody. Come on. And that's when uh, Rob, or excuse me, Sabu's music hits and interrupts Matt Hardy's round of applause for Shannon Moore, his best friend. And out comes the former hardcore champion alongside a referee. He's got the referee by his shirt, pulling him along with him. Matt just kind of looks kind of caught off guard. What, what, what are you doing? Sabu uh, gets up on the apron, tosses the steel chair that, of course, he's holding. He's Sabu. Tosses the steel chair right in the Shannon Moore's face. Shannon Moore takes the bump, rolls out of the ring. The referee rings the bell, and Sabu goes right after Matt Hardy. It's 24-7. As long as the referee is present, the hardcore championship's on the line, and we're about to have a hardcore championship right here, right now. Sabu wants his rematch. So we have the match, which is a hardcore match. Like, this is legitimately a hardcore match. A lot of the times I kind of cheat and use Aussie rules and make it a wild brawl or whatnot. But I did make this a hardcore match. I believe Matt and, uh, and Sabu have the ability to pull it off. They both have pretty decent hardcore abilities, especially Sabu. So, um, And about that had decent wrestling but didn't have much way in the heat. Matt Hardy defeats Sabu in 10 minutes, 15 seconds by pinfall with a twist of hate. I'm going to have to rename that. We're going to go with the Twist of Hate finisher that I guess was used in TNA or renamed in TNA for a bit. So um, there, here's the way I kind of, you know, it's this is a typical hardcore match. Rob Van Dam gets involved. Sabu gets involved. Or not Sabu. Shannon Moore gets involved. And this is mostly because, like, RVD and Shannon Moore, they get involved, of course, but they mostly brawl with each other. They're distracting each other, and we'll see why in a second. 75 B minus rating for the match. Um, Sabu with a 62. Matt Hardy surprisingly outperforming Sabu in his specialty. 69 for uh, Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy's improving in his technical and his performance skills. This is this look, looking pretty good for Matt Hardy. And we didn't get that stupid segment where I, 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 could, you, I could do better if you use me in a different type of match. 75 B minus rating here. While well, RVD continues the brawl with Shannon Moore around the arena. So they're, like I said, they're kind of distracted with each other. Back in the ring, Matt Hardy has retained the Hardcore Championship over Shannon Moore. And while the referee checks on a fallen Sabu, Matt Hardy slides out of the ring and starts to toss chairs back into the ring. Of course, the referee tries to stop Matt Hardy, but he eats a twist of hate for his troubles. And that's when Matt Hardy takes one of the chairs, repeatedly smacks Sabu in the back, just bending it over the back of Sabu before taking another chair, opening it up and folding it over the neck of Sabu before once again hitting a twist of hate on the Sabu and slamming him pretty much throat first into the, uh, the whatever, you know, the chair, obviously, the little part of the, you know, the rung of the chair, whatever you would call it. Um, I did think about maybe him grabbing a ladder and then like hitting the twist of fate while him sitting in the ladder. So whichever one you guys like more, we'll go with that. The chair's a, a basic one. But the latter kind of harkens back to Matt Hardy's, you know, 
being a ladder specialist kind of guy. So anyway, uh, Matt, you know, Sabu's rolling around the mat, grabbing his throat. He can't breathe. He's coughing. <clears throat> you know, doing that whole crap. Uh, Rob Van Dam races back into the ring. Of course, he's a bit a bit away. He was brawling around the arena. Like, they, I'm, I'm talking, they're in the crowd brawling with each other. So RVD ditches Shannon Moore, races back to the ring to check on his friend. Matt Hardy's already gone by the time Mr. Monday Night gets there. And um, RVD's just checking on his buddy. Paramedics come down to help Sabu to the back. And uh, it seems like Matt Hardy's done some real damage to Sabu. I wonder if we'll ever see him again. Matt Hardy, though, cementing himself as the hardcore champion here tonight for sure. 71 B- minus rating as we come back from our probably commercial break to a little bit of a die-down match, I guess, as Kurt and Eric Angle go one-on-one, -on -one, or I guess not one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, face off against the Boogie Knights, Alex Wright, the Thunder Kid, and Disco Inferno. And about that had decent wrestling, not much weighing heat. The Angles defeat the Boogie Knights in 10 minutes and 10 seconds when Eric Angle defeats Disco Inferno, probably with the Angle Slam. I might have to add that to his moveset. Kurt carried the match in terms of in-ring performance. Of course, Eric Angle was the weak link struggling to keep up with everybody else. That's not a shocker. Also, Eric was really off his game here tonight. Come on, Eric. I need you to do better. Kurt Angle really stood out as always. I mean, that, that's not... He's working with guys below him, so... It's not to be... Not really surprising. Uh, Eric Angle with a 40 in-ring performance. Kurt with an 89. Disco Inferno and Alex Wright Das Wunderkid with a 54. Alex Wright is improving in his performance. Disco is improving in his flying. Eric, I need you to improve, please. Moving on, we have a 80 solid B rating as backstage. Jonathan Coachman is with uh, the Angles. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me at this time, Kurt and Eric, the Angles. Well, guys, the tag title match is set. We know it'll be the Dudley Boys versus Damnation at SummerSlam. But you two were close to beating Damnation in that number one contenders match. And despite that one loss, you two have been on quite the roll. Eric Angle steps up. You know, Coach, not only have we been on a roll, but we just keep on rolling. <laughs> and sure, maybe we hit a wall, but it didn't stop us, did it? We just hit it and bounced back a few. And then rolled forward again. But hey, it don't matter who come, who wins come SummerSlam. Dudley's or Damnation, the angles are coming for tag gold. And then it doesn't matter who steps up. The Flock, Steve Blackman's Dojo, hell, even the Click. It doesn't matter because Kurt and I are better than them all. Well, well, well. You hear that, Sean? Bald Angle and his baby brother think they're better than the Click. And uh, Eric Angle kind of hides behind Kurt, his brother, his baby brother, the Olympic gold medalist. And uh, Kurt kind of steps up, taking a little offense to Kevin Nash, not backing down here. And what if we are? <laughs> Look, you wish. <laughs> oh, I got to pull up the handy dandy notepad. Look, Kurt, you're amazing. But your bald brother over there, he's holding you back. You know he's right, Kurt. Think about it. Former world champion, Olympic gold medalist, now sitting on the sidelines with your talentless older brother. You know, you two talk a big game. It's too damn bad your schedule's already full tonight. Because since you two are so confident that you'll just run over Eric and I, then how's about next week? Since you two are apparently done with your break from the ring, why don't you put your money where your mouth is and face us next week. And that's when Kevin Ash and Shawn Michaels look at each other. And then they just break into laughter. Nash looks at him. Yeah, that's not happening. You see, you two aren't worth our time. Shawn and I only step in the ring when there's money involved. The only reason we're making an exception tonight is because we've got business to settle. But hey, if the money's there, then we've got no problem handing your asses over to you on a platter. But until then... Enjoy the sidelines, boys. So, uh, the click showing a little bit of disrespect to, uh, specifically Eric Angle. I mean, they, they told Kurt he was good, but in a way, they also, I would say, disrespected Kurt. I mean, that was right in front of him. He disrespect your family, disrespect you sometimes. 
Kurt Angle was good. Eric Angle looked dreadful. I mean, he was cowering half the time. Kevin Ash looked good. Gained heat for the storyline for Kurt and Angle.